back everybody we're still on article 625 electric vehicle power transfer systems in this video we're going to cover the rating of the circuit so 625.42 i think you'll like what they did here in the 2023 code we'll take a peek 625.42 rating energy management systems are now allowed for reducing load requirements all right this i think is very much going to be the way of the future. I, I think we're we're at a point where in our electrical distribution systems we're going to see an energy management system installed on pretty much everything. I, I, whether it's a house or a hospital or a swimming pool or anything else, I, I really do think that this is the future of our industry is the use of energy management systems. Uh, I just don't think that we have a choice to be honest and not only do we not have a choice but why not take advantage of the technology? Why not let the computer do the the work for us and that's what 625.42 is recognizing. So 625.42 all electric vehicle supply equipment are considered a continuous load. Certainly well you plug in your car when you get home from work you leave it plugged in until you leave for work the next day so yeah they're definitely a continuous load they, they go for three hours. Service and feeder loads are based on the product ratings unless allowed in A or B. All right, so this particular product, if I can get my uh, mouse out here, this particular mouse, the output is 122.40 or 122.08, 30 amps continuous. All right, so we're going to treat that as a 30 amp continuous load. So we're going to take 30 amps times 125%. That's how I'm going to size my wire. That's how I'm going to size my breaker, right? Treat it as a continuous load, unless allowed by A or B. So A talks about using an energy management system. Now, before we get into the actual rule, just kind of take a minute and, and take in this photograph here. Here we have a switchboard that has a full-blown Windows-based operating system on it. Now, this one happens to be from Schneider Electric, uh, Square D, but Eaton makes them, you know, Siemens makes them, ABB makes them. So I don't want to, you know, it, it is technology or manufacturer agnostic. But you can log into this thing with your username and password, and you can let the energy management system do the thinking for you. So an EMS, energy management system, that complies with 750.30, and by the way, we'll talk about that in the future can limit the load. If the EMS consists of multiple pieces of equipment with integral control, then the system must be marked accordingly. All right, so if you're at a commercial building, or in fact, even worse, what if you're at a multifamily dwelling, an apartment complex? You know, the energy conservation code already is putting in requirements saying that a certain percentage of parking spaces either have to be ready, either have to have an electric vehicle supply equipment or be roughed in for an EVSE. So if you've got an apartment complex, think about it. Five years ago, the total, the total current load on your parking lot was like 20 amps worth of parking lot lights. Now suddenly it's 5,000 amps because you've got all of these cars. So where are you going to get that 5,000 amps from? Well, the answer is you're probably not going to get 5,000 amps for your parking lot. It's simply not in the cards. So what you can do is put in an energy management system. And what that will allow you to do is put in a bunch of different electric vehicle supply equipment and control how much current is going out to each one of those chargers. So when I say charger, I mean the charger is, is in the vehicle, but you know, electric vehicle supply equipment, the charger, I think you know what I'm saying. So you can program your energy management system to talk to the charger and determine how much current is going to go out there based on the total need. So let's say I buy four car chargers, four electric vehicle supply equipment, and they're those 30 amp units that we saw the nameplate a moment ago. I could put maybe five of those on one circuit which again doesn't satisfy the general rule, but if I have an EMS, I'm gonna put five of them on one circuit. If one car pulls in and parks and plugs in, I'll let them have 30 amps. If two cars plug in and park, I'll let each of them have 15 amps. And if five of them are plugged in and parked, then I'll let them each get six amps. And yeah, it might take a while to charge your car if you're only getting six amps, but you know, if you leave it plugged in overnight, you might be okay. So we're going to use an energy management system and just 
let the technology kind of steer the ship here. I think it's cool that we're in, that we're at a time and place where this is even an option. You know, this photograph here, by the way, this is not in some you know five hundred million dollar power plant or something. This is actually at the office of an electrical contractor that's here local in the Salt Lake City area. They put in an energy management system, and they can, when it, when it comes to EMS, here's two terms you need to know. They can control and monitor the loads. So some of the loads you're going to monitor, you're just gonna watch it. Other loads you're gonna control, all right? So what you would do here is you would monitor loads that you don't want to change, all right? So just to take it to an extreme, let's say I've got emergency lighting and ventilation for a hazardous, for a hazardous location. You can't play around with those. We're not going to let you decrease the loads for an emergency system or a you know hazardous location. So you monitor those and you control your vehicle chargers. The other things that you could control would be like the lighting in the building. And let's say you can program it to where if it's a 24, 24 hour a day facility, but this part of the building goes dark for eight hours of the day and this part's 24 hours, then you can change it so that when that part, you know, from, from 5 p.m. to 6 a.m. or whatever, then the lights go down and you get more capacity for your vehicle chargers. Or you could maybe even decrease the overall brightness in the whole building by 2%. And while that may not sound like a lot, if you can feed that out to your parking lot, cool, you were already paying for that anyway, and, and it probably wouldn't even be a discernible decrease in illumination. So the emergency, the energy management system, I think, is going to be the way of the future. We're going to tell the computer that we have a 400 amp service or a 2000 amp service or whatever is appropriate. And we're going to say, listen, monitor these loads. Don't play with them. All right, don't screw with my lights. Don't screw with my air conditioning. Monitor those, control those, and make it work. I think that's what's going to be happening. The other thing that happened here is in 625.42b, adjustable settings. Adjustable settings are allowed, and the calculated load can be based on these settings. All right, that is something that we don't normally do in the NEC. Normally, if you have utilization equipment, we're going to say, look, whatever the nameplate is, that's the load, go with it. Well, here we're saying, eh, if you can open up the cover and dial back the settings, maybe this is an 80 amp charger, 80 amp EVSE, but we don't have 80 amps of capacity. I mean, and, and you see that all the time, right? Residential guys, you guys are well aware of this. Guy has a 100 amp service on his house and buys an 80 amp charger. <laughs> so I'm, doing, I'm really sorry, but hopefully you didn't throw away your receipt because you, you might want to send that back and get you a 30 amp charger instead. And the guy goes, oh, no, no, this is the best one. I got to have it. And it's like, well, yeah, but you don't have the capacity. That thing pulls more than the rest of your house combined while you're using it. So it, it's not in the card. You're going to need a service change. Maybe they can't do a service change. Maybe it's not financially possible. Or maybe the utility won't allow it. You call the utility and say, hey, you know, we got a new vehicle charger and we need to upgrade the service from a 100 amp to a 200 amp. Maybe the utility says, yeah, you and everybody else in the neighborhood. Well, we got a 50 amp, a 50 kVA transformer feeding 10 houses. We can't do a service change on all 10 of those houses. We don't have the capacity, you know. So in the, such a scenario, what's a person to do? Well, a lot of these, you can open them up and you can dial back the settings. Now, whether or not you tell the homeowner that you did that, I'll let you decide. But maybe you dial it back from an 80 amp charger down to a 40 amp charger or whatever's going to be appropriate. You know, I would recommend uh, putting a recording amateur on the house, seeing how much power they actually use on a regular basis and, and show the homeowner and say, look, man, this is what you're using. I'm not making these numbers up. This is what you're using. That's what you have. We're going to have to dial the settings down. So dialing back the settings is allowed. If we go back to the code, it says the equipment's rating label must reflect the adjustments and access to the adjustments must be restricted by complying with 750.30C. Now, that's pretty easy to satisfy. Uh, the restricted access simply means that it's... Uh, that it's behind a sealable cover that requires a tool to open or behind a bolted enclosure door or a locked door that's accessible only to qualified person. So you can definitely get restricted access. Change the label to indicate what you've done, right? 
and then away you go. So there you go. That's the circuiting allowances under the 2023 NEC.